What's up, everybody? Mike and Kevin are back because we haven't done a podcast in like two years now. I don't know if it's been two years, but it has been a minute. I know, right? Our last episode was number 50, and we had T-Bone on there, and I guess we could, decided we couldn't top that, so we didn't do it. We hadn't done another one since then. Been like, yeah, that, uh, can't, that's can't it. complain about that one. That was a pretty good one, I think. Right? We're glad to old T-Bone doing good. Going to get to do some hunting this fall, for, thank goodness. That's probably the best medicine anybody could ask for, right? Well, I would think so. It uh, it just does the heart good to get out there in the woods and chase some stuff. Well, right now I don't want to get in the woods. It's a hundred and hell outside. Well, that's what I was about to say. I mean, one reason we also hadn't recorded one in in a couple of weeks is we've been a little bit busy feeding deer and battling the heat. I've been trying to not do anything particularly outside. It's been I got in my truck yesterday, and it was 125 degrees. That was my truck temperature, of course. But still, that's even if it's 100, it's hot. But 125, that's probably the hottest I've ever seen in my life on any thermometer, period. That's hot enough to melt your candy bar if you leave it in the truck. That I think it turned it would turn it to all liquid. Even the peanuts in your Snickers bar would probably melt in that. <laughs> I'm- I'm pretty confident that would have to go back in the refrigerator for a while. Yeah, that, that would. I don't even want it after that. It's just going to be just a <laughs> conglob of cold crap. <laughs> just this is what it's going to be. It's going to be terrible. So I don't know. I was anyway. having an okay day, and now all I'm worried about is nasty candy bars getting thrown away. So. There we go on a Friday. My candy this, bar. This is this is what Kevin. If that can if that candy bar was say you have a whatever your favorite candy bar, we'll just call it say a Three Musketeers, and it melts into just a liquid format, but stays in the wrapper, and we put it in the refrigerator, and it might be a flat quarter inch thick. But Kevin's still gonna eat it. He might eat the wrapper and all if it's stuck to it. Just he's, he's gonna do it. I'm gonna Write have to give it a try. I, I'm gonna give it a try. I mean that chocolate nougat with milk chocolate all melted it all up it's got to be good i mean why can't it be <laughs> you you need to go to intervention <laughs> well i mean you eat it you know. eat a, a cherry pie out of your turkey vest from two years ago i know it. i've seen it i've seen you try it it was an emergency situation were well, you gonna die were <laughs> well, you I gonna was, die I, I mean, you know, my blood sugar was was getting bad. I needed a little something. <laughs> no, there's no way. <laughs> I seen you eat when you wake up. Your blood sugar was fine. <laughs> well, you know, just you never know. You, you just never know. It could have been an emergency. Speaking of eats and stuff, have, you need to try this Georgia peach tea from Lipton. We don't. We're not Lipton. We don't even know anybody at Lipton, but the, I, I found these, or Beth found these, and I started drinking them. They're pretty good. You like peach. You don't peach, like huh? peach. You don't like peach anymore. The crap. <laughs> I like peach pretty good. I'll have to find one and give it a try. You right now have <clears> down <throat> here in Florida? I mean, I'm in only like maybe an hour north of you. I hope they do. Well, they ought to. They might not have it in Bramford, Florida. <laughs> they probably didn't. just found out that marshmallows were invented last week. <laughs> this right here is the exact first moment anybody in Bramford, Florida even knew that existed. So. What, a, mar- a marshmallow? <laughs> Well, we digress this conversation, but we always start out talking about something pretty stupid and continue that through the rest of the podcast. So if anybody's listening, please give us your comments and feedback on peach tea by Lipton. This is the, and, it's, it says diet, but I mean, we all know that that's subjective. I just, I mean, I don't like eat, drinking stuff with a ton of sugar in it by any means. And, uh, but it's got, it's got a good refreshing little flavor in it. Thought about mixing some bourbon in there, see how that went. <laughs> Not a day, Satan. Not a day. Peach. That's about well, Kevin. Well, um, just because I'm not in the know, I guess, on dates, but doesn't our new season start next week? Uh, sometime next week, probably about Tuesday, I would have to guess. Well, you're the one that sends the shows to the network and has deadlines and dates and all this stuff. Yeah, but their deadlines are like, they had to be there like two weeks ago. So that ship's already sailed in my world. <laughs> well, anyway, y'all watch Backwoods Live next week. Um, you can watch us this week on Saturday. 
we air a couple times, and then after that, uh, you're gonna have to wait. You can watch the new stuff on Tuesday, and then our different our air times are changing. I don't even know. We, it's Tuesday nights at ten o'clock on the Sports Channel. I know that you can catch us on Pursuit Channel if you got Pursuit Channel on Saturday. I do know that Saturday nights with the block with uh, us and small town hunting and respect the game. So um, that that'll make and everybody that Saturday start, night. That should start the first Saturday in July. Okay, so that's all backwards then. Well, because the the way TV works, the quarter starts on a Sunday, so Saturday's the last day of the week. So Sportsman Channel Tuesday, and then Pursuit Channel Saturday. Yeah, not not tomorrow Saturday. Right. The following. So that's what that's what I'm ne- right. next week. That's next yeah. week. We're still on this yeah. week until Sunday. <laughs> in most of the world, that's kind of how it works. Here, here in here in Florida, that's how. I in, like the, it. in the in the contiguous forty eight, we do operate on Sunday through Saturday as a full week. Now, other countries maybe not so much, but we we don't live in another country, so we're just going to stick with what we know, which is very little. Which is, does not include when we air, apparently. Obviously not. <laughs> not I mean, so. but it is what it is. Uh, so. Pursuit Channel on Saturday nights, you can watch Backwoods Life. Sportsman Channel on Tuesday nights, you can watch Backwoods Life. Hunt Channel, like six times a week, you can watch Backwoods Life. On Waypoint, you can watch Backwoods Life. On Roku, you can watch Backwoods Life. On YouTube, you can watch Backwoods Life. If you don't want to watch Backwoods Life, just search for. Yeah, if you don't want to watch Backwoods Life, just don't turn the TV on. That's, that's my best advice. <laughs> We try nah, we're to not put there. some of our nonsense everywhere. Yeah, we're not. We're not. I mean, we're not as bad as meat eater. You know, we don't air for an hour every day of your life. So you just have to catch us when the good times are. Not just like we don't. Air, we don't air forty-seven times a week. Yeah, I mean, if we would be the number one rated show on the network. We aired nine thousand times a week too. If we were the only show on the network, we would be number one, no doubt. It's kind of where we're at. I'm with sure this thing. somehow we would screw that up. And, I, and honestly, like our podcast we're talking about, we're not sponsored by anybody and we're not obligated to anybody for anything. So we speak freely over here. <laughs> this is the I'm off the record sure, podcast. I'm pretty sure somehow our Roku channel is nothing but Backwoods Life and we're the second most, most watched show on there. <laughs> yeah, our, I think our Backwoods Life podcast is number one. <laughs> <laughs> All both listeners. Thank you all. Much appreciated. Should be doing. Hold on. I, while we're recording this podcast, I'm going to go uh, live on somewhere. Let's go live on TikTok. I see people doing that, and I mean, I swear, uh, for those of you out there on TikTok, I, 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 it is like the most puzzling app in the world to me because it makes no sense whatsoever. I can post a video and get a million views on there. Because we've done it. We've gotten two or three million videos on view. And the next video I post gets like seven views. I, th- I don't understand that. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know how algorithms work on this side, artificial learning and stuff. I mean, I post some quality crap. Like these great deer videos. My candle just burned out over here if y'all see smoke coming across. Yeah. <laughs> That's just the effect. It's like light. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's like, what do you think? Like when you go to a concert and you got smoke and crap going off, that's where we're going with this. Yeah. He's right in the middle of me complimenting Kevin, pulling deer videos from our awesome footage so I can put it on places like TikTok to get 400 views. And then we can put one of our genius camera guys shutting himself on the wrong side of a fence and it gets 782,000 views. Like, wouldn't people rather see a deer? Well, and you know, like sometimes I like to bake some good old buttermilk biscuits if you take all the same ingredients and put in a bowl and mix them together and put them in the oven for the same amount of time you always get the same biscuits social media don't work like that it don't matter what ingredients you put in there you don't always get the same results (laughs) unless it's your grandma grandmas don't mess up biscuits am i right that's right my grandma had the best biscuits ever been on this planet so far as i know but you must not have ever had none of my grandma's biscuits then. Well, I have had some of your grandma's fried cornbread. 
and that was equally as good as my grandma's biscuits. Well, I will agree with you wholeheartedly on that, even though I didn't have your grandma's biscuits, but I take your word <laughs> for it because I know you're a biscuit connoisseur. If anybody sees us in person, you know we like food. Um, I'm still trying to do this freaking here. I'm putting up. We're going live over here. How y'all doing? But I don't know. We'll get all seven viewers over here on, on TikTok while we're recording the Backwoods Life podcast. Um, but complimenting what you were just saying about my grandmother's cornbread. Grandma, my, my grandmother, she's still alive. She's uh, 91 or 92 now. And the cornbread day is rubber. I hate to say it. It's sad. But that's why, if you remember, when we ate that cornbread, back when she was able to make that cornbread, we said, we're going to eat it. We're going to eat all of it. And no piece ever went uneaten because we knew the burn. days of cornbread were limited. You could have been so full off of eating whatever else we just had that you was about to throw up. But if there was another piece of fried cornbread, you were fixing to eat it. There's no doubt. You could eat. We, we could have just eaten a uh, 20-ounce T-bone steak. But there's one piece of cornbread. We're going to arm wrestle over it or split it or whatever. And I've had that cornbread on – I've had, like, raw oysters on it. I've had ceviche on it. I've had you, – you can just make up stuff and have great – I mean, you think about it. You could open an entire restaurant on cornbread. You can put a lot of stuff on it. I think I was there for the ceviche on cornbread. That, it, even that it was, was good. good. Exactly. So that's my thing. It's like you can literally like, – you can have a restaurant and say, okay – try to name something other than like a dessert maybe and that might be good on cornbread i don't know but just name uh, like I've, a I've meat people put jelly on cornbread many times that, that that's what i'm saying it's like why not cornbread is cornbread, right. corn, look cornbread and gravy are really close to each other all right i think that they uh they deserve each other you think about this. If you can have cornbread and gravy. There's no doubt about that. You can put some. I mean, I've done it. But gravy could be its own food group. And cornbread could be its own food group. And then add bacon. So cornbread, gravy, and bacon. Who wouldn't like it? Don't, the only thing about bacon is I'm not a big bacon with sweets much thing. I can do like like sausage and corn and uh pancakes. I got that's 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 all right. But I and then sausage and syrup. I just can't do bacon with I can't do I can't do bacon with with like donuts and stuff it just doesn't that doesn't work for me no I could eat pancakes with bacon I ain't dipping my bacon in the syrup and I don't want somebody messing with bacon dipping it in chocolate or something like that oh gosh that chocolate right. nah, chocolate and bacon doesn't even sound right like that's not even I don't I don't understand people but that want people to do, stuff do it like I, now I hate to say this though but I've had candied bacon before and it's really good but it's got like brown sugar it's different brown sugar is a different sugar than like white sugar i guess and i mean none of this in any racial way whatsoever <laughs> but bacon is delicious i'm just saying <clears throat> i'm just saying wave over to everybody on tiktok had a couple hundred people on there, but they all went away now because they realized we're talking about stupid crap. So, <laughs> welcome to the Backwoods Life Podcast. Yeah, every week the same way. What so, you when you about? gonna open the fried cornbread restaurant? Well, I've got. Is, is I, I'm on the fence between a cornbread restaurant or just a dessert bar. Because you think about this. All right, so this was my idea. So, like with a, a, a dessert bar. You have, so especially here where I live, like most of your restaurants close around 10 o'clock, like your, your food and everything. And then you, you can go to a, a club or, or a real bar, like a straight up bar, and you might can get halfway crap food or whatever. And just everybody's just there to drink and sing karaoke and be stupid, right? So my Appetizer thoughts were, or something. well, right, I mean, something stupid. So I thought in, in, in the essence of this thing, you could literally uh I'm open a bar with a dessert bar and say it, it opens around we'll, we'll say from 8 p.m to 1 a.m something like that because you got the people that eat dinner early 
you know, six o'clock crowd. Well, they're going to get through and they're like, well, you know what, let's just go over here and have dessert at, at Kevin's Cupcakes or whatever we call it, you know? No, we're not going to call it that because Kevin would eat all the cupcakes. But <clears throat> have you like I a mean, bar? If the title says that they're mine, then I'm entitled to them. But, but have you a bar there as well so that, um, you know, you, you, you can have a, you know, Bailey's on the rocks or you have a kind of dessert drink and you still have your bourbons and stuff like that and, and, and simple stuff. But you just have basically pies and cakes. No fancy crap. We don't need like something's going to come to your table on fire. We just need some, I mean, like straight up cheesecake, banana pudding, just pound cake with ice cream, you know, just simple, good stuff. I like that. I think it's a good idea. What about s'mores? You could even roast some marshmallows right at the table. That's an outside activity. No, I don't want fire. Know. I do not want fire in my restaurant with people that are drinking around it. No, Kevin, that's a bad. That's a horrible idea. <laughs> I was like, let's just turn a bunch of rattlesnakes loose in the bathroom. I think that that is a much different situation, but you know, that's okay. Everybody will leave their comments and tell us about how good of an idea I had and that you were wrong. It's okay for you. Kevin, 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 no, we do not want open <laughs> flames at the tables. Well, it don't have to be like a bonfire. All you got to have is a little old sterno thing, a little fire about that big. Just Kevin, is that, does fire, does, does fire burn things? It does. Exactly. Just what I need. Billy over here, been drinking since noon, went out to dinner with his wife. Now let's go to the dessert bar. Let's make a s'more in the middle of the table. And I set the napkin on fire and burned the whole place down. Do you think our insurance company would go for that? No, not at all. Just read the comments. I mean, that's all I'm saying. There's no comments, Kevin. This has even been rolled out. Like nobody can see this. this is... Just give it, a, give it a little time. I don't know, Kevin. But anyway, back to the reality of what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> randomness. So we went over to our hunting camp this past week and uh, put out our Antler King rack maker and deer and elk pellets for what I would call a very substantial herd for this time of the year uh, showing up on our spy point cameras. And speaking of spy point, shameless plug, the new flex camera comes out on June the 30th. So everybody needs to check this camera out. If you've had his historical issues with your spy points, and I know there's a lot of people that have for whatever reason, whether it's your fault or their fault or whoever's fault, the flex is going to eliminate, I would say probably 90 plus percent of any issues with spy points that anybody's ever had. I mean, most, most, Cameras anybody has a problem with this is a cell phone camera. Software updates can usually fix a large majority of those problems. And this camera is going to be able to update its own software without you having to go put stuff on an SD card. This way it makes it simple. Yeah, pretty much. You just turn the camera on. And you look at it on your app and control things. It does updates. It's we're supposed to have one to look at a uh, functioning model any day now. So uh, according to the email I got yesterday. So we're going to try to show this thing off on social media and everything and put it to good use and show everybody how it works. So when everybody gets theirs, um, be ready to go. Simple as that. And, you know, in the, in the past you had to buy a camera based on, uh, is this an area where Verizon's good or AT&T is good? And... You bought the wrong one and took it to the wrong place, it might not work. This one fixes that problem. So these flex cameras from SpyPoint have dual SIM cards. Um, they're, I don't think they're the only camera with that, but I think they have the, the best technology built in to designate the best signal. It, we, we sat and listened to all the, I don't want to know what they want to call it, uh, technical talk on how these things work. And um, just trust me, they're going to be really awesome. Gonna have well, I do think, I do think they're the only one with it actually already built into the camera. I think other ones that sell it like that, you've got to pick and choose which one you're going to put in the camera. This one, it's already there, already built in, ready to go. 
Mm, I'm not sure. I think there's one other company that does have that as well, but it doesn't matter. This this one's gonna be better. It's got uh, they boosted the end. They got Nains exactly. Good, so it don't matter. It doesn't matter. They got stronger uh, stronger antennas on them now. I mean, just the whole cameras are a solid unit. I mean, it's it's they're gonna be good. I can't wait to get one out in our, in our woods. And, you know, see how they do, and you can get get videos on the app now and stuff like that that you can't do before with the flex. So that's a huge thing for us because, you know, we only get seven million pictures every night right now because these bucks are eating this antler king deer and elk pellets and rack maker literally as fast as you can pour it out. I mean, this is what our side by side looked like the other day, hauling that stuff out there to them. For those of y'all that are listening and not watching, that was a side by side with um, about twenty five bags of Antler King pellets of varieties yeah. loaded up on there. I think I figured it up it was like twelve hundred and forty pounds of deer feed we put on there. Had to wave, got to wave it everybody on TikTok every once in a while. Hey, uh, what's up? I got like four people watching now. I had like two hundred, but I guess I'm boring. So welcome to this but uh yes we fed the crap out of some deer the the bucks are really starting to show up and show out uh, they're looking better and better every it's, it's crazy how fast they're growing in like a week it's just stupid the the size they're putting on and we've been very selective over there well except kevin but <laughs> um, i didn't shoot anything last year so i mean you're talking about stuff yeah like in the past yes because you shot your last year's photo year before <laughs> It's okay. It may be true. Right? It may be true. <laughs> it's okay. But we had a lot of carryover. Um, a, few, a couple of them we're recognizing, we know from, from the past, and they're really putting it on right now. So I'm anxious to see how they finish out. We got some that are, and we got some deer that are already eight points right now. They're looking good. Hopefully they'll throw a, another couple points on there, get some get some time length on them. A couple got some good mass on them. Uh, the height on a lot of these deer looking really good, but you can definitely tell them that jump from three to four on, on these deer. And, uh, even for the pine trees and sand of South Georgia, they're looking pretty solid. And it, it's not because of lack of food because they are basically devouring Antler King as fast as they can on a daily basis. I keep thinking that our deer, you know, really far along and looking really grown. And then I saw a couple of friends post from the Midwest that they already had some 150s on their property. so. I don't. We're not. We're not I, talking about that. that. We're, we're not talking about them, Kevin. They don't count. Just, you just ruin the whole podcast. Like everything was going fine, you started talking about big deer that other people have when in parts of the country where they've got giants, and we we're trying to grow, like, whatever. If like all the deer, all the deer, a... all the deer on video up there behind you. None of those are on our property. Yeah, those, I mean, obviously, because those, those, came... those are all on your wall, but none, like, especially the one with the spiral horns on it, that didn't come to my property. <laughs> well, you know, but if one of those does happen to walk across our property, where did he go? Right there? I want you, you to you, Yeah, it'd be the biggest spike we've ever killed there. <laughs> and the only spike. Um, but, you know, we were supposed to, well, we, we fed up feeders this week. We had to go shoot some video stuff and all that. And we were supposed to leave there and go to South Florida, meet up with the guys from Spy Point and be hog hunting right now. Um, not that I didn't want to go hang out with these guys. And we, we didn't get to go because uh, Brian over there, Brian ended up having COVID. And he's one of the hosts of the Spy Point video series. So we decided we'd push it back until Brian's better and uh, we can, you know, have a good time. But I was just not, I mean, I talked to Billy down there, and Billy said they do have literally air-conditioned blinds. He said, you'll sit in a hunting blind, and it'll be 72 degrees in there. And I was like, well, that's not bad at all. But you still got to do everything else in 100 degrees right now. So usually in the summer when the afternoon thunderstorm little patterns start coming through, it doesn't get a million degrees down in Florida like it is here and there right now. So we're going to get there. Just It's going to be a little while. I'm okay with it being several weeks if it needs to be, because right now it's the hottest I've seen it in a very long time. If, if anybody out there listening really uh, cares, 
the best time to go to Florida hog hunting is like January and February. I would say February. Deer season's over. You can focus on some hogs. Because one, they come to the feed better. You can you can find them better and congregate better. And it's a lot cooler in uh, January and February than it is now. A lot. It's hot right now, even in the middle of the night. Even if it's, uh, I guess, what we would call hot for February down there, it's still better than now. At midnight last night, it was well over 80 degrees still at my house. Bro, like, I, I, it was 839 uh last night i think here i was checking the weather because it did have a rain cloud come by that we didn't get any from it was 95 degrees at, at right at dark yeah 30, 30 20 30 minutes before like dark at sunset it was 95 degrees that's not normal all right i'm gonna end this thing over here hey got uh tiktok i mean there's only one of y'all left what's up austin how you doing man give you a shout out and hop off here and get on Facebook while we're recording the podcast yep. just because I, but there's three people on now. I gotta wait. <laughs> Things have picked up. It's getting crazy. It's getting crazy. I, I do not, I we say, I go back. All three of y'all. I, I do not understand TikTok. Like, I try and I'm trying, you know, me, like, I, stuff bothers me to the point when I'm trying to figure it out. Like, I, I want to figure out, like, I, I can, I'm pretty good at puzzles and stuff. And, and like, I look at every social media outlet as a puzzle and trying to figure out, okay, I just want, I don't want to be like, I can't, I mean, I'm not, I know I'm not going to be like Justin Bieber or, you know, anybody like that on these social media platforms, but I just want us to have the maximize the reach that we can with, uh, us. And for me not to be able to figure this thing out. And it's so random. Uh, I got a couple questions over here, Kevin. I've got to answer these questions. Um, what's the middle buck on the top score? That one up there? That deer was, what is it? Oh, oh he was like, they, oh, oh, oh. It's, like on, it's on my phone. Over I here see, on I the, see, I see. yeah, yeah, it's, you got to, you got to be everywhere. Um, that deer was like right at 160. He came from South Texas. And we've got somebody over here, top shot 450. He's in Texas. He's new here in, in Texas. What do you, where, where are we at? We, well, Kevin, who I'm doing this podcast with, that you guys on TikTok can't hear because he's in my headset, is in uh, North Florida, and I'm in South Georgia, where it's like I seriously think my next door neighbor said the devil's building a house right down the road. It's so hot right now. It's bad. I believe that. Yeah, it's bad. Austin over here is from Missouri. That's Kevin. Literally, I'm looking at Kevin here. I, I can do this. Say hey everybody. Oh, what did I do? Oh, you oh, killed sorry. me. Sorry, sorry, I messed it up. Let's do that again. There's Kevin. Yeah, right there. Hey, TikTok. And you probably can't see it, but uh, behind Kevin, I think he's probably got a Missouri buck back there somewhere. Uh, nope, none of them are Missouri. Ah, uh, there's. I was gonna say Kevin loves Kansas. Kevin loves Missouri. That's what I'm saying. He's his second home. So the Missouri ones are over on that wall. How about I do that? Like there, I can, I can, now I look like I'm talking to both at the same time. That'd be, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> but all five of these people are still watching. I appreciate all five of y'all though. The other 195 that left, y'all are rude. That's like going to church <laughs> and leaving. When the preacher starts talking, you just don't want to hear it. That's exactly how this live stuff is. If you hop on somebody's live feed, for five minutes you're like I'm, I'm out that's just like getting up in the middle of church and leaving am i right a little bit although yeah, you're never trying to say i'm not entertaining as church no i'm just button? saying that some of those 200 people might have just been in the bathroom and they got finished so they turned their phone off and left oh yeah good point kevin kevin said for uh y'all on tiktok watching that Everybody that left may have just been sitting in the bathroom checking out what was going on here. I'm blaming TikTok. I think they're censoring me because I got deer antlers on the wall. Could be. Oh, well. You know, Thank you, before Thank you started talking to those five TikTok people. Well, I'm facing the end of this thing on TikTok. Y'all, thank y'all on TikTok for watching. 
Um, but we'll, I'll do this more and we'll do it better when I actually have Kevin with me and we can talk more. So thank y'all again. Y'all watch all our videos down there, wherever they're at. All right. I'm sorry, Kevin. I interrupted your, what were we, what were we supposed to be talking about? Well, I just was going to say, you were talking about, you know, social media and all the pieces of the puzzle. Uh, I saw a friend of mine the other day on Facebook had a puzzle that reminds me a lot of how social media seems to work. Yeah. It was a, perf a perfectly clear puzzle with no picture on it. And uh, whenever they started putting it all together, they had like six or eight corner pieces. And they thought, oh, the puzzle company made a mistake. So they went to the website and the puzzle company said, no, that's part of the design makes it even harder. There's even some extra pieces in the box. So good luck. Enjoy the hardest puzzle ever. <laughs> that's how social media seems that, to be. That's brutal, actually. <laughs> like that's, I'm going live on Facebook now. I so I can do this thing over again. I, I don't know. I just, I, I, I felt like we don't do enough live videos. So now we're going to do more live stuff. Um, yeah, it's a puzzle to say the least. Kind of like building a fishing pond, right? Yeah, it, uh, that's a puzzle we also have not mastered yet. Well, I don't know what we're actually trying to master, but we're trying to make a fishing, a two and two and a, two and a quarter acre pond. Is that what we got? Two, about two and a half, two and a half acres. Two and a half acre pond is what we're trying to turn into like a phenomenal bass fishing pond. Um, what's have been this, we decided that this May was three years. Uh, May of 2019, May 30th of 2019 is when we put the baths in. I so, that would be, that'd be, so that'd be three years. Yep. All right. So the bass that we put in there and under optimal conditions, they would have be, it would, it, they should be about three pounds right now. Whoever's uh, left. Three plus, three plus, between well, just, three uh, and five, depending on. Well, we'll just, we'll just say three. That's easy. That's, that's, that's easy. Three, that's a, that's a pound a year is what we're, is, is optimal. But we decided the other day that we've got way too many little guys in there now uh, because we were literally supposed to start taking some out last year, right? Yes, we should and have. We did not, and we did not take any out last year. So now we're in the position of next time we go there, we're going to have to fry some fish. Yeah, we need to have a big fish fry. We need probably to pull 30 out of there ASAP. So any of y'all that are listening or watching this, if you want to come eat some bass with us, just find us and come on over. Yeah. Simple as that. At the time that we're frying fish. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's got a lot, lot to kind of fall in place there. Um, so with that being said, we've done, we put, if some of y'all have seen the video of the, of the spreader truck backing up the, our pond there and putting lime in the water, that was to help with the pH level so that we can have more fertile environment for uh, basically microorganisms in the water to thrive, for the smaller bait fish to eat, for the larger fish to eat, for us to eat and make this thing the best it, thing, best it can be. So and, and uh, we really needed to fertilize after that line, but we haven't been able to because we've been fighting with grass for right. years we, we, we've, been, we've had a lot of grass in there and so what we did was probably make a better growing environment for the grass for a little while. But now uh, we've established that these uh, grass carp that we've put in have been doing something after all, because we put them in there about this long and now they're about this long. Yeah. They look like they're about 40 pounds when they come. They're, they're, they're giant. I mean, they're, um, they're, they're probably minimum, seven to 10 pounds up to 15 or so probably now something like by, that by the way since we're all multitasking and stuff i requested to join your live on facebook oh how do you do that oh that, that button right there let's see if it works well you know oh you know. wait it says it's adding you hey look at there what i'll come now, live <laughs> you got to turn your volume down on your uh, phone, though. I had it way down. I don't know why. I guess it came up when I got added. Oh, okay. 
Now I don't hear myself anymore. Hey, everybody, Kevin and I both are here. <laughs> you should be able to hear both of us now, I guess, right? I would imagine. I mean, you know, we're just here I guess. recording a podcast. I don't even know if um, I don't know if anybody can hear me, but you know, we got like a, a comment, so that, that's cool. Appreciate that one there. What's everybody else doing like this summer? Um, and then Art sent us a text message in the middle of freaking recording here. Art, thanks, Art. We're working here, Art. <laughs> Art, we're trying to make more money, and we don't even get paid to do a podcast, so that's stupid on our part. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're back back to our pond uh, puzzle that we're trying to put together. We've limed. We've got grass control in progress through carp and some uh, some uh, chemical that we found to put in there. Um, we sprayed some of the grass a couple times now, where it's it's making a difference. Carp are making a difference. The water level's finally down where in the range it should be, instead of just entirely too high, because what was happening is all the bait fish could hide in the grass and in the very, very shallow water up around those trees and stuff. And the bass were just not able to consume them at the rate they need to. Now we're getting closer to making this thing work. So uh, we decided last night, Kevin and I text back and forth for about 20 minutes about this stuff. Cause it's like, like we are talking about social media being a puzzle. We want to figure these things out. This right here, we've got actually vested interest in because we bought all these fish and put them in this pond. So we want to maximize And we want guys. them to be as big as possible when we reel them in. Who doesn't want to catch a five-pound bass? Raise your hand if you don't want to catch a five-pound bass. Nobody. Nobody raises their hand unless there's a 10-pounder to be caught, right? So. And that's that's the ultimate goal. Exactly. We want to make this the best two acres we can or so. So the next part of the, when we decided last night that we've got to crank up the fish feeder more, right? Like we're not putting enough food out uh, for the, the bluegill and red bellies and shell cracker and bass food gotta, is what we call we gotta it. we got to feed the pan fish some more, make them grow faster. And, but the thing with it now, we do have a trophy pan fish pond right now. There's no doubt. Like bluegill, I mean, I, I can't put my hand around some of them. I got big hands. Although I did read, you know, we had been concerned about feeling like we needed to keep some of those big brim. Mm -hmm. We uh, do not need to do that because they said that that's your ones that are making baby brim. You don't want to take them out. But I want to eat them. Well, we can eat some sometimes. Okay. okay. But we're about to eat a lot of bass, so you should get a good taste of some good fried fish. Yeah, but a fried bluegill is still really good. Well, I'll, I'll try to catch you one, buddy. I can catch my own. I don't need your help. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, look, if we need 30 bass out of there, I'm just going to send my dad down there for about 20 minutes, and he'll have 30 bass in the boat. Him and Kyler could put a hurt norm, I'm sure. But so we throw this other conundrum into our pond equation. Now we've got an app that we're going to use to tell us which fish to keep and which fish and fish to not keep because you don't want to keep a 12 inch bass that's looks like a football like you don't want to keep that guy he he's a he's a a game player he's a varsity he's a superstar he's well exactly. on his way to being a 10 pounder he's like shooting a one year old eight point don't do it unless it makes you happy i don't care but from our standpoint, we want those fish to thrive. So the ones that are 15 inches and a pound, they got to go. Like the the longer, skinnier ones, the, because from and I and I think you and I read the same thing. They said once that fish doesn't consume at the rate he needs to consume or she needs to consume, whatever, um, it's almost like they can't recover from that. Like it's just they they're 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 genetically slowed down to the point where they're beyond fixing and they just need to be in a frying pan. Yeah, if the thickest part of your fish is at his head, then he ain't on the right track. No, that's not. And I'm fishing, I mean, I've caught fish in lakes and, I mean, you know, big public lakes, I've caught with ponds, whatever. It's just, that's nature. I mean, every, everybody's not going to be a linebacker. You know, it's just, it's not going to happen. So, um, but it's all right. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna eat well. We decided we need to take thirty out of there for sure. 
uh, pretty quick. Okay. And, and I think we could do that in a day if we wanted to. I mean, really, we could. Mm -hmm. um, Big Mike caught almost 30 by himself, you know, one time around. But some of those weren't, you know, keepers, if you will. Some of those were superstars. So. That's right. Some of those went back. Like the other day, you know, we can we can definitely tell from year one to and two to now that the size has gone down as far as the football look that we want in these bass. And that's the only way you're going to grow big ones if they obviously are healthy and can eat a bunch. So between that, we're thinking about adding some bait fish in there and really dumping more money into water with the hopes we can catch a big bass one day. Well, you know, what else are we going to do with it? <laughs> Eat. Well, it's, you know, everybody's told me having a, swim, a swimming pool in the backyard is just a hole you keep putting money in. Well, a pond pretty that, pretty close to that if you want it to be a good one. Because... Yeah, between you know. bait fish and structure, uh, I think we're about to literally throw a bunch of money in the water. Well, can't put a price on fun, I guess. But I mean, like now in the big scheme of things, we're not talking like we're throwing five, ten, twenty grand into this thing. We're, we're you know, a couple thousand dollars, maybe something like that, to get this thing on the right track. That's all. Like pond management is not overly expensive by any means. Your your investment is obviously fish and stuff, but um, you know, that's that's it's not like deer hunting. <laughs> it's not like we're buying a pickup truck, but you know, it's still no, a lot of money. No, not at all. But with all that being said, that's fun. That's what it is. I, I mean, I like the management side of things. I mean, I like filling up feeders and planting food plots and watching the cameras and doing stuff like that just as much as I do figuring out. I mean, I go down there and, and we get this pond right and catch a few bass, and I, it's good. I can sit back and know that, hey, we got a great pond here to fish in. Yeah, you want to come catch a five-pounder? Come on, we'll go catch one. You know, that's, that's the goal. It's like you want to go sit in a deer stand and see a nice button, and let's go. That's, that's there the have been days when Michael was going hunting, and I said, no, I ain't going hunting. I'm going fishing because we put a lot of effort in this pond, and it's a lot of fun out there fishing. Yeah, but you should have went hunting with me. In hindsight, that particular day, yes, I should have. <laughs> because most of the time, if I tell you I'm going to go hunting, there's a reason. I'm not doing it just to go watch the trees. Like, I got something up my sleeve. Like, I think it's going to happen. Because otherwise, how, otherwise I would have went fishing. <laughs> Although, I will say, if you had left 10 minutes sooner, I would have been right and you would have been wrong. Well, if we all had candy and nuts, we'd have a Merry Christmas too, Kevin. <laughs> That's an if. What if? And I, and I did catch fish because we have set up a pretty successful environment. But I could have killed all of the turkeys. You could have killed mine and your limits almost. I could have killed all the turkeys. I did not. The shot one. Shot one. That was a good day. But anyway, that's what we've been up to. I mean, we, we, we just, it's that time of the year where, you know, you, you want to enjoy doing stuff with the family and summertime, kids are out of school and, uh, you know, just doing, doing stuff like that. Uh, heck, there's a lot of stuff going on in general this summer. I mean, our good buddy, Brantley Gilbert, who is in the first episode that you're going to see next week. Um, he's touring all over the place right now, so going and seeing shows like that, that's festival time of the year, and just enjoying during summertime without it being a million degrees. I mean, everybody's going to the beach, going to the lakes, and blah, 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 pool days, all that crap, which is all fun. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking it, but give me about, what's today, June the 24th. Kevin's birthday's tomorrow. Tomorrow, June 25th. That's right. Y'all all get him boxes of rocks and send them to his house. Look, Just put Kevin Knight in Bramford, Florida with a rock in it. He'll come to his house. He'll, he'll get it. Uh, so he, he can build him a rock garden. The funny thing is, <laughs> Bramford, Florida is so small that probably if something came to Kevin Knight in Bramford, Florida, they'd probably find me. That's exactly why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so it's June the 24th, so it's fun. About two months from now, we won't be thinking about fishing much and swimming and none of that. So we got to do the work now. So when that time gets here, we're getting really excited about these things up here. 
deer. White, white tail deer. Deer, deer, white tail deer. Hey, uh, you mentioned Brantley a few minutes ago. You know, he released a new song last night. So yeah, him, 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 and, him and Jelly Roll. New song. And uh, Luke Combs released a new album yesterday. So when you're out there sweating and fishing, new music out there to listen to. The, the only reason Kevin mentioned Luke Combs is because they're having a beard competition. The two of them. I don't know who's losing. I think both of you. We can put both our beards together and have one good one. <laughs> you, you, you're gonna have to get some clippers on that thing for a long, bro. <laughs> like you're smuggling a gun. The other day, well, you know, if I if I thin it down too much, you can tell that I can't grow a beard worth a darn. So. <laughs> well, if you leave it like it is, we can tell anyway. <laughs> uh, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. All right. Well, that's pretty much a good rundown for what we've been up to. And um, I really, really wish we had a better topic of conversation. I, I, I tried to get uh, with our buddy Chris Cobbett and get somebody on here from Element to talk about their new clothes coming out for this year. But maybe we'll do that in the near future. Um, we definitely will have somebody else other than us on here very soon so you don't have to listen to pure stupidity for however many minutes of your life. I mean, we have just covered feeding deer, pond management, melted candy bars and cornbread in about an hour's time i see absolutely nothing wrong with that this is the most diverse diverse podcast <laughs> in the history and slightly redneck a lot i would go i would, red, I would, red I would go along there's a lot of redneck in there um we can't deny that part of it so i'm pretty sure though when somebody looks at the title and it says backwoods life they're expecting there to be some redneck involved yeah there's supposed to be neon signs and ducks and deer and guitars and you know i mean that, that i don't know shameless plug for Winsent, right quick and ozonics Winsent. and we have 39 live viewers on facebook so mine says 25 23 mine says 39 i like yours better hey all y'all out there thank you for making us feel better about ourselves <laughs> that's better than tiktok what'd you have over there three no i had 200 and something at one time and then it oh, dwindled down to nothing i know it was terrible <laughs> it was like ice cream at kevin's house it just don't last it ain't gonna last that's right <laughs> it's got to go <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to wrap this thing up. We thank everybody for listening and watching live if uh, you're doing that too with us. And appreciate everybody that tunes in. Back with life on TV and new episodes coming out next week. Brantley Gilbert, myself, and friends of ours were bow hunting. And um, it's a pretty, pretty entertaining show to kick off the season. And then uh, I think the week after that, it's me and Big Mike, Kevin, and Kyler. We're all in camp together having a good time. And it just gets the ball rolling for all this new season 18 fixing to hit the woods. This, I mean, it's, we try our best to always have a good time and we hope that shows in the video. But if I don't, y'all comment and tell us, you do not like you're having, look like you're having a good time. You need to do something different. Everybody. We love comments as long as they're tasteful, of course. And just like Kevin likes melted candy bars. That's kind of how it goes together. <clears throat> All right, y'all have a great weekend, great week. We'll catch y'all next time. Backwoods Life Podcast, episode 51 is done. Thanks, y'all. I got to stop recording. <laughs>